you probably know some of the common ways to give advice and suggestions in English. But are they all the same? What is the feeling that each one gives? Some are, of course, more polite and gentle, and some are more direct, even possibly rude. Well, how can I know which one is which? That's what we're going to talk about in this lesson. I'm going to go through a bunch of these phrases, some of them you probably know, and share not just examples, but also share the usage of these so that you can get a feeling for when you should use them, when each one is appropriate. If you enjoy the lesson, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. And now, let's get into the video. Let's talk about some simple ways to give advice and recommendations. How can we do this in a very polite way? And how can we do this if we want to be, let's say, a little bit more direct? Not necessarily pushy or rude, but a little bit more direct. So let's, let's get right into, first, how we can do this politely. So polite, respectful advice, okay? Have you considered? When you say, have you considered, it's like holding up an object to them and saying, did you think about this? And then they may say no or yes. And the feeling is no pressure. If you didn't, that's fine. It's a very gentle way to give someone a suggestion, right? And it leaves a lot of room for the person listening to you give advice to maybe say, mm, that's interesting. Let me think about that and not answer you right now, right? Oh, I haven't thought about that. Or yeah, I thought about that. But they're not giving a direct answer to the advice itself. They don't have to say, yes, I will do that or no, I won't. It's, it's a very gentle, I think, right? So have you considered taking a cooking class would maybe be some suggestion or advice that you could give to someone who's in a particular situation where they're looking for something to do. They're bored. Have you considered taking a cooking class? That might be fun. No, I haven't thought about that. Let me think about that. Okay. And that's it. That's the end, right? So the, the great thing about it is you're leaving them so much room. If I were in your shoes, I would. Or if I were you, I would. Now, if I were in your shoes, I would feels to me a little bit more gentle than if I were you, I would. If I were you, I would is slightly pushier, but I think still fairly polite. The idea here is that you're showing the other person you understand their position. Being in someone's shoes is a way to say, I can picture myself as you in your current situation. And so I'm showing empathy in that way, right? If I were you or if I were in your shoes. If I were in your shoes, I'd consult a doctor. I'd talk to a doctor. You're having some issue, right? Maybe your teeth are falling out or whatever. And you say, I, you know, I'm worried about this. My teeth are just falling out. <laughs> what should I do? Well, uh, you know, that sounds pretty scary. It's happened to me before in dreams, but not not in real life. If it were, if, if, first of all, is this a dream? Let's pinch ourselves and check that, okay? Seems like maybe it's not, okay. Well, if I were in your shoes, I think I'd probably go see a doctor. Yeah, maybe I should. So it might be a way to push somebody to do something, but again, you're not forcing them to do anything. It's not pushy. And it's not insisting on anything. It's just saying, hey, this is what I would do. How about you might want to think about? This is just about as gentle as you can possibly be. It's a very soft suggestion. And, and you know, whether we're giving advice or suggestions, the, the line between those things is not clear, right? So if you're telling someone that they might want to consider going to this restaurant, because they want to go to a restaurant and you're giving them a recommendation, a suggestion about which restaurant to go to, or 
they're having a problem, their teeth are falling out, or you know, uh, they, their, their, wa their basement is flooding or whatever it is, and they need help and you need to give them advice, this is all good for any of those, whether you're giving someone advice for a problem or a suggestion or recommendation for something that they want to do or they are considering and they don't know which one to do. It all generally works, right? So you might want to think about joining a gym. That one, I suppose, could be context specific. Um, if that one is not prompted, then it would be considered probably rude. <laughs> if you just look at someone, <laughs> friend, and you feel like they're overweight and you just out of the blue say, you know, you might want to think about joining a gym. That would, of course, be rude for different reasons. But if you're being asked for advice, I'm trying to... I'm trying to lose weight. I'm running every day. I'm in my garage. You know, you might want to join a gym because they offer free classes. They have trainers. Having a little bit of financial pressure, knowing that you're spending money on the gym could motivate you a little bit. Might be a good idea instead of just working out at home. It's easy to just not do it at home, right? Especially if you sign up for classes. So there, you might want to think about is the opposite of pushy. Is definitely not pushy. Again, assuming that you're being asked that. In the same way, not very pushy as perhaps you could. It makes it an option, right? This is one option. Here's another option. Here's another option. And you could replace perhaps with maybe. Or you could just say you could. You can actually get rid of perhaps and maybe. The only difference is perhaps and maybe, maybe you could, perhaps you could, is more gentle is more polite, is less direct. And if you just say, you could, it's not that it's pushy or rude or anything. It's just uh, it's slightly less gentle, let's say. So perhaps you could discuss this issue, this matter with your family. See what they say. You're concerned about something and you're not sure who to talk to about it. You're worried if you say something to your colleagues that they'll, they'll judge you. So maybe... Maybe you could try talking to your family about it. They'll accept you no matter what, probably, hopefully, and uh, they might have some, some good suggestions, right? So I'm just giving you one option. And you can take it or leave it. For all of these, the feeling is, here's what I think. If you don't accept it, fine. If you do, great. I mean, no pressure. Okay. One option might be to, this one, in the same way, is just giving another one giving another one, give, an, give another thing that you could do. You could do this, you could do this. It's a way if you have a list of pieces of advice to bring up yet another. Maybe we've already gone through three and we've ruled them out because they're not working. And I don't want to keep saying, well, I think you could, or, or perhaps you don't want to keep saying, well, if I were in your shoes, you can only say that so many times. So finally, you want to just say, well, one option, one other option, another option, another option, another option. After you get to one, then you could just start saying another. Another option may be two. Another option would be two. Another option could be two. And you could just keep using those in depth indefinitely. One option may be to enroll in an online course. Ah, okay, I'm really trying to work on my English. You know, I'm struggling with the pronunciation and grammar. One option may be, yeah, I'm no pressure, one option may be to enroll in an online course. I, you know, uh, I've heard there's a, a teacher who has a lot of online courses that may be uh, really helpful and worth worth checking out. You know, you probably you could probably find them on his website. Who knows? It's just one option. It's just one option. No, pr no pressure at all. Okay, now let's get into the di more direct ones. And when I say direct, I want to be clear. I don't mean rude, okay? Any of these can be rude in the right situation. Rude is context-driven, right? It's like the gym thing. If you unprompted say to someone, you know, if I were in your shoes, I'd hit the gym right away. <laughs> right, that's rude because of when and how you say it. So I don't want to say rude. I want to say... The ones we've talked about are 
very soft and very gentle and not so direct. Now we're going to talk about ones that are a bit more direct. You should being perhaps the most, right? This is kind of like, it's a very straightforward way to almost put your finger out, point at them, and almost to say, if you don't do what I'm about to say, you're not smart. What I'm about to say is your best option. And if you don't do what I'm about to say, I will judge you, <laughs> right? That's the feeling of it, to be honest. Uh, now, there are times when you would use it casually, right? Well, you should do this and just quickly say something. And, uh, it's, you know, because I'm saying it quickly, it's not that pushy, right? Um, but it is often used in a kind of blunt way, right? Uh, sometimes you, you want to share something that you love in a blunt way. You should check them out. I just maybe found a new musician or a, or a band and I want you to listen to them and it's urgent. You should, you should check them out as quick as, as soon as you can. They're, they're the best, right? I think that you're going to, to love listening to them. So maybe that's a friendship thing. Maybe that's just the relationship we have. So again, I want to say, doesn't mean rude, right? It's just fairly straightforward. You should quit that job if it makes you unhappy. Why are you doing something you don't enjoy? If you don't enjoy it, stop. You should quit. Uh, and, and that could be a good thing. I'm trying to encourage you to do something that I know you actually want to, you, want to do, right? Why don't you? Why don't you take some time off? I can see you're stressed. Why don't you do that? Now, this is not ask, asking you why. It's saying that you should. So it's similar to you should. It's fairly direct. And it's giving a suggestion in a way that pushes a little bit without being rude. Uh, why don't you take some time off? Why don't you go on a vacation? You know, why don't you call in sick today? You need a mental health day. Obviously, you're, you're very stressed. Uh, everyone everyone needs one sometimes, uh, you know. Uh, there, I may be, I'm concerned about your health, your overall well-being. And I want you to do this because I see that you're not doing it for yourself. So I'm, I'm trying to push a little bit. I recommend. Now, I recommend, again, for advice, for suggestions, recommendations. I feel strongly about it, right? I recommend, particularly saying you're sorry immediately. If you did something wrong, don't try to hide from it. I recommend saying you're sorry, getting it over with, and and then moving on. Because if you don't mention anything, if you don't say anything, it could create this awkward feeling between you, right? So just say you're sorry. That would be the most direct. I don't even say you should. I just say directly the action that you need to take. Say you're sorry to her or him. Say you're sorry. That's very direct. I recommend is similar, except often, if it's an action, saying would be an ing. I recommend doing. I recommend saying. It doesn't have to be. You could say, I recommend that you say you're sorry. I recommend that you go to this restaurant or visit this hotel when you're in this city, right? So it could be that. It could be ing, but it is kind of um, a way of saying, this is a thing that I feel strongly about. And yes, you can say no, but I do feel strongly about it. And you need to know that, right? If you know what's good for you, you'll, for example, if you know what's good for you, you'll apologize. So similar to our previous example, this would be a great structure for giving advice. And it doesn't have to be if you know what's good for you. That is kind of the idiomatic version of it, where there's a common expression people use. If you know what's good for you, you'll apologize. If you know what's good for you, you'll usually you're giving some advice to someone about something to do right now, right? If you know what's good for you, you'll take a week off and relax because you're obviously very stressed, right? So that's one way to do it. But you can put other things in there, right? If you want to do this, right? If you want to explore your passion, you'll have to quit your current job. You need to quit your current job, right? If you want to become a professional roller derby referee, 
Is that what they're called? You'll probably have to leave your current job. And I think you should. So you're kind of setting up this as an if this is what you want, do this. If this is what you want, do that, right? So it's very useful because you can put all kinds of other things in there. Very, very helpful. Again, another way to say this is it's best to. That's pretty direct, right? This is often when we're in a context, we're talking about a particular thing already, and I'm adding instructions based on my experience, perhaps. So woodworking. Yeah, where you, you, I'm a, I've been making tables for 10 years. You're just getting into woodworking. And I say, well, it's best to, you know, uh, source materials from a reputable uh, dealer so that you don't end up with something that's going to split in half halfway through your project, right? So I'm giving you my personal advice based on what we're talking about. And yes, that is fairly strong, right? I'm giving you basically a guideline or a rule to follow, but it is based on my advice. I want you to hear it so it's more direct. It's not like, a, well, man, it might be a good idea. I could, If I said it might be a good idea to a source from a reputable dealer, then it's almost like I don't care you know, you, if you do or don't, it doesn't matter. No, it's best to do this. I have a lot of experience. You're just getting into it. You should probably follow my suggestion here because I know what I'm talking about. So I'm saying very clearly it's best to do that, right? That's kind of the difference between these examples and the previous ones we were talking about. So hopefully these are all clear. Hopefully you're maybe taking some screenshots of the examples throughout. What I'd like you to do is try to make some examples yourself. If you really want to practice these and remember them, see if you can build examples like I did in a simple sentence as a way to interact with what you're learning. It's one thing to just hear something or see something and passively learn it. But are you going to remember that? I don't know. Maybe you have an amazing memory. But if you participate by making a few of your own examples, then you're more likely to remember it and you're more likely to remember how to use it. So feel free to share those examples with me in the comments if you haven't done so already. Don't forget to like and subscribe and also get a free course, Natural English Conversations, in the links in the description.